Hello, um, I'm currently doing my laundry. It's drying right now. I'm waiting for it. And then in my laptop, I'm currently um, simulating some uh, PIFIA, you know, events, uh, 50,000 of them. So it's going to take a while. So um, while waiting, uh, I'm going to make a short video that showcases the power of an application uh, which you can find in like Android tablets or cell phones or Apple or uh, Apple cell phones or tablets and it's called the math studio okay and it's very you know it's very useful and powerful to like students of mathematics the sciences and engineering okay if you don't have like uh, an easy access to your laptop and then like for example you're riding the train suddenly you get an epiphany or a revelation and you need to do some basic you know calculations that you can't do in your head then it's a very powerful um, uh, tool okay and so in this video Video, we're gonna do some uh, the basic things that it can do so for example in this basic video we're gonna look at like sine waves their superpositions destructive and constructive interference so the most uh, basic uh, that it can do is for example you can plot something like uh, sine of x okay and you can see right away uh, it plots that function okay very straightforward you don't need an app for that it you can uh, pick picture that in your brain okay however the nice thing about a uh, math studio is that it has this uh, built-in variable called capital T. And every time you do that, you call the variable capital T, then automatically you're telling it to animate something, you know? So your function, if you're using the capital T, it depends on something that is running as a function of time. So as time goes on, that capital T changes automatically, okay? So for example, if we now plot sine of X minus capital T, okay? So you expect, since it's like minus T, if you've taken some basic uh, subject, in, subject in physics, you'll expect this to be a wave that will be traveling um, to the right, okay? And if you press enter right here, you get exactly that wave, okay? And in fact, you can like plot another one um, beside it. For example, you can plot another uh, sine wave, okay? Uh, X, but this time, uh, uh, instead of minus T, let's use um, plus capital T. So now you'll have like a wave that is traveling to the right, which is the minus T, and then a wave that is traveling to the left, which is the plus T. So you, you see here with the, the blue one, okay in the plot right here and in, in fact if you're familiar with again a uh, basic physics you know that uh, two waves that are traveling in the opposite direction with the same um, amplitude okay with the same like height if you add them then they create something known as a standing wave okay and we can do that right here we can we, we can create a third plot which basically uh, adds the function x minus a uh, capital T okay plus okay sine of uh, x plus uh, capital T. Let, let me uh, use the sign here so that it introduces the parenthesis right away. X plus capital T. And when you press enter, so in, it introduces the a third, uh, a third uh, plot, which is basically uh, the sum of the two waves that are uh, meeting uh, each other, okay? And as you can see, that orange one, it, it, that's why it's called it standing wave. It doesn't, it's, it doesn't move like to the left or to the right. So there are points where it's always zero, okay? And there are points where it just like uh, oscillates up and down. So we call that a, a standing wave, okay? So very, uh, very basic uh, application, but but one that that is... Um, very useful okay but let's do another one let's do something more uh more fun because this this guy right here the math studio it uses something called a uh, slider so let me delete all this stuff here delete entry okay and what the slider does is you introduce a variable so let's call it like uh i don't know uh, s for slider for example okay and the slider you can set it from a specific number, so example, let's say from one to, let's say I want to add like four waves, so one to four, okay? So it, it introduces a slider that you can adjust, which will have values one to four. So by default, it will be integer values, but in the fourth parameter, you can like, uh, you can, what do you call this? Um, tell it what the what the intervals are, but let's use the default, which is, which is uh, the integer uh, default. Okay, and let's define a function f, okay, 
which uh, will be dependent on or which will be calling that variable s. So what we have is if you do this, okay, so at uh, s, so you're creating a function of s, which is which becomes a list depending on the value of s. So if s is equal to 1, you only have one function. If, f, if s is equal to 2, you have a list of two functions. So if we press enter here, if you adjust this slider right now, so you'll see you have there a list of... but. Now it, it, it shows zero because we're still not telling what, what F should do, okay? So now what we're going to do here is let's introduce a loop, okay? So for, uh, let's say, I, okay? For I in uh, 1, okay, so we have a variable I from 1 to uh, S, okay, up to the value of the slider, Here's what uh, we're gonna do. Okay, we're gonna define the function. We're gonna call the function f, which is a list that will depend on how many s we have, and that is a function of uh, i. Okay, and that function will do the following. Okay, it will be the sign of uh, x, like the one we showed a while ago, um, minus. Okay, but instead of just having capital T, let's multiply it with the value of the slider. Okay, so now depending on how many S you have, so that will be, for example, if S is equal to 3, then I will run from 1 to 3. Okay, and so you will have uh, diff uh, different coefficients for your uh, capital T, and so you will be having sine waves that are like out of phase. Okay, they will be like all moving to the right, but then some will be faster than the others, okay? So that's what we're uh, gonna expect, okay? So let's do that. And then, oh, I press enter, that's wrong. So if you if you want to break the line, you should, you don't use the enter on the keyboard, you use the enter on the purple bar here, okay? So I press that and then we say that our loop has ended, okay? So let's try, uh, let's try plotting, okay? Let's plot uh, our f, okay? That's, it's a simple because our f is already defined within the uh, for loop, okay? So if I press enter, enter right here, so now you see there a sine wave, okay? Now if you uh, adjust the slider, currently it's at s equals 1. You can see here on the, on the right, if you adjust it, it will make it s equals 2. Now you'll have uh, two waves, okay? And again, the second wave uh, has a different coefficient on the capital T, therefore they are like out of phase, okay? And so now you see sometimes when the waves are like running towards each other, sometimes they will coincide, okay? And that should coincide to a sum total, a, a total wave that is that will have a bigger amplitude, okay? We call that a constructive interference, but then at other times you will see that the maximum uh, of the violet uh, plot coincides with the minimum of the blue plot, then we'll have a destructive uh, interference, okay? And so let's do that. Let's plot the uh, sum, okay? And what we're, we're gonna do is after ending the loop, we're gonna introduce here a uh, function, I don't know, let's call it um, g, which is basically a function g, which is basically the sum, okay, of all the f's because Recall f is a list depending on the value of s. Okay, so now we have a now we're gonna plot that um, third, uh, sorry, uh, second function which is our g. So let's just say uh, plot uh, g. Okay, and let's press enter. Okay, so now we're only seeing one because of course um, you're plotting f is just one of one of it okay and then g the sum of a single function then you do just only one function if you make you just see one function if you make s equals two you will see three plots okay the two sine waves that are both moving to the right at different uh, velocities and their superposition okay their sum okay so let's do that s equals two bam okay so you see here the orange one that is the sum so so that we can like tell right away which is the sum let's give it a color so this is one of the nice features of um math studio you you can give it a color so what color do we want um g is the sum uh the total what color starts with a letter t total uh teal Okay, I hope this this has a color teal. Teal is sort of like like blue greenish or something. Teal. 
it's here okay it recognizes it so when you use steel and then you press enter so that's s equals one so let's make it s equals two there's your sum okay and to make it even better let's put a shade in our teal uh, sum plot so you do shade how do you do it is it shade equals one what shade equals one I oh, know shade equals one is putting a shade above. How about shade equals two? So I'm not sure what this does. Hopefully shade equals two is like inside the graph. Uh, my supervisor just emailed me. So let's let's uh, cancel that first. Okay. But anyway, so let's press enter here. Okay. Now it's inside. So that's what we want. Okay. So now let's make it uh, S equals two. Ah, oh, so now you can see the total. And so the nice thing is you can adjust, you know, the rate so that you can appreciate like uh, the moment. Oh, shit. I, 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 so if you press this, the, the two arrows, it will slow it down. And you can appreciate that the moment they coincide, bam, that's like the maximum sum for the, the, the total wave. And then the, the moment they, you know, the, the top of the purple one coincides with the base of the blue one, the, the lowest point. Then you get a zero, uh, zero uh, total wave. Okay. To make it even better, let's 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 introduce a uh, another. Uh, sorry, I pressed enter. Let's introduce another uh, variable here. Let's call it plot color. So the purpose of this. Uh, oh, it's here. Okay. The purpose of this um, variable is that it allows us to make a list of um, colors so that we know which is the first wave which is the second wave so by default let's follow Roy G B. so by default let's call our first wave um, red okay the first color of the rainbow second is orange Ro and then yellow we have four uh, Roy G uh, green okay let's cancel again the emails okay all right, so you have those plot colors, and now what we what we can do is let's go back to plot F. Now let's instruct it to give it a color, but not just any random color because a while ago it's just giving it its own color, purple and blue. Now let's uh, give it a color that is based on the list called plot color. Okay, and let's enter. So now we should expect that the if you set S is equal to 2, the first wave will be red. The second one is orange. Let's look at that. S equals 2, and then let's play it. Okay, now you can see there, right? So you have, uh, you have a red, and then you have an orange, and then the moment they coincide, they, they add up. Okay? And then you can like uh, increase it further at up to 4. The maximum is 4 if you think that's so fast. Of course, it will be faster when you make S bigger because it's multiplying the T variable. But anyway, you can like slow it down if you want. Okay, and you can see the moment they coincide, bam, maximum wave. Let, let's maximize it. The moment they coincide, uh, wait a minute. Uh, there are now three of them. Maximum, okay? And then of course, the moment that uh, the, the sum becomes zero and so on, okay? And in fact, look at you. You can like have, have some more fun. For example, if you don't like if you you don't like a total wave that is moving, if you want it, for example, a standing wave, we can do what we did a while ago. You go back to your um, loop here. You add I don't know, uh, call it h for example, a function h, which is a function of i. But now, if instead of um, sine uh, x minus i t, let's make it x plus i times t okay and so what that does is so let's enter it now we'll have waves that are moving to the left and to the right h is ah, uh, okay there, we have an error because on line two we only defined f calling to the slider of course we need to put h here as well so h will also be a list that will be dependent on the size of our slider s okay and just to make to make it uh, more fun let's make the slide the size of our slider five let's add another more color here uh roy g beef so after green we have uh blue we have blue okay and then the sum will now be so instead of just adding f so note that the sum f a while ago is a huge wave the one with the 
teal color, but it's moving to the right because it's a sum of sine waves that are all moving to the right just with different phases. So sometimes they add up, sometimes they cancel. But now we're going to add it with all the, all the waves, the H functions, which are moving to the left, okay? And when you do that, so plus H, the sum, and then when you plot G, let's also plot, uh, let's cancel the email here. Let's also plot together with uh, F, the, the H function. Okay, so now when we plot our G, we expect it to be a standing wave. Okay, so let's press enter. Let's do that. Um, let me reset it. Okay, so there you go. Now we have a standing wave. So S is equal to 1. So you see the first plot refers to the color red. So that's the F function, only one of it moving to the right. And then the H function, the next color, which is orange, moving to the left and the Teal colored one is the sum of their superficial. So now if you make S equals 2, you will get two F uh, functions that are moving to the right at different speeds, different phases. Okay, two of them moving to the right and two corresponding waves moving to the left also at different phases. Again, the teal one gives you the sum, but this time it is a st still a standing wave. Okay, so let's make S equals 2. Okay, and you see it, you see it there. Jing, jing. S equals uh, 3. So now you see, uh, like, I believe uh, 6 of them, right? If S equals 2, you you see uh, 4 of them, okay? S equals 3, 6 of them. But you can see, yeah, it's very cool. It can do it can do a lot of stuff. Yeah, so this, this is just like a basic, uh, the basic, some of its basic capabilities in this uh, video series, which I'm going to call the Math Studio Showcase. I'm going to show you all other stuff that it can do okay so i use this a lot like even in my like android tablet if you check out my video called the uh, pin integral and i think the second part of the euler mascheroni integrate uh, constant i think I, I i used it there okay but i did not like i did not talk about it but in this video showcase i'm gonna talk about uh, math studio exclusively okay so thank you very much i hope my uh, i still need to reply to my supervisor and i hope my laundry is already dry so thanks for watching i learn i hope you learned something and i'll see you next time bye bye